at four years, maybe they took some time to increase it, like one year they increased by a dollar, and the next year they increased by 25 cents. So it doesn't mean that this is actually true, that it does increase 25 cents per year, but it's just saying on average, that's kind of what happened. So yeah, that's the average change. Right? Um, you can also figure out, if you really wanted to, you can, um, you can also figure out the uh, increased percentage over the four years, but that is not a very common question. I haven't seen it come up quite often. So I wouldn't be too concerned about it, but you guys already did the percent section and um, did pretty well in the homework, so I think you know how to do percents at this point, right? Good. The next one we're going to talk about is the averages and sequences, but this is, like I said, very similar to that question that we see in chapter or number 19, where um, Sometimes they'll give you a data set like this, and other times they'll just give you a sequence and ask you what will happen if you add um, another number at the very end of the sequence, what happens if you take away this number. Um, so yeah, that's all there is to that. So some problems that you guys wanna solve in this section. is gonna be number one. We're gonna look at number one. Now, when I tell you that the average is just the sum divided by the total number, it's easy to tell, like, yeah, that's obviously the equation, but what people or what students don't recognize is that you could also say that the sum equals the average multiplied by the total number or total number of terms that you have. Why I say that? Look at number one. If the average of x, y, and z is 15, what is their sum? When students see that, they go, well, what is x, y, and z? Don't we need to find x, y, and z to figure out what is the sum? No, you don't need to worry what x, y, and z is. You don't need to know at all what x, y, and z is. All you need to know is that you have, let me use a different color. You have this x, y, and z, and then their average is 15. So to find the sum, you could just use this equation right there. The sum equals the average 15 multiplied by the total number of terms. How many terms are there for number one? Hmm? Three. So then your sum is going to be 45. You don't need to know what x, y, and z are. They're not important. You just find the sum. Right? And then number two is another type of question very similar to that. If the average of x and y is 11 and the average of x, y, and z is 5, then what is the value of z? This is another problem then where students go, well, now don't I need to find x and y? No, you still don't need to know what x and y are um, because, let's see, we'll do it over here. The average of x and y is 11, right? And then the average of x, y, and z is 5. And so when you look at the equations of this, it should be x plus y divided by the terms. And how many terms are there for x and y? Just 2. That equals 11. And then in this case, it's x plus y plus z divided by how many terms? 3 equals 5. And if you look at there, there is an x plus y, and then there's an x plus y. So you don't need to know what x and y are individually, you just need to know what x and y are as a sum. So you find that by multiplying this side by two. You get that x plus y should equal 22. Sorry, it's markers. So yeah, x plus y needs to equal 22. <clears throat> and then you plug this whole term into there we get 22 plus z divided by three equals five. And then from there, you just do your basic algebra to solve for z. 22 plus z equals 15. Z equals, what is z equal? What did you say, minus seven? Minus seven. So your answer choice should be B.